It's like a weird knocking at the back of my house, but uh, I'm the only one here besides the dog. Weird. Uh, okay. So good morning. Happy Friday. What a way to start your Friday with some math. Uh, let's do, we're going to start and hopefully finish lines today. Uh, let's see here. We'll call it uh, Sean's Math 120. So I've got my own 120 section. It, it's confusing. And section numbers, well, they're hard to remember. Uh, okay, so uh, last day we finished uh, 1.8, so section 1.8. We're not going to do 1.9. Uh, I can't even, I don't even know what 1.9 is, so don't worry. Um, inequalities was in, in 1.8. Since we kind of wrapped it up last day and we want to get going, I'm just going to jump straight into lines. Uh, so section 1.10 is on lines. Probably familiar from, you know, other math courses that you've taken, uh, things like y equals mx plus b should probably ring a bell at some point, right? The equation of a straight line. And so uh, what we start, we need to uh, talk about the slope before we can talk about a line. So um, the slope of a line is essentially how, how steep this line is, right? So if you imagine, kind of a coordinate system, and then you've got this line, and we need to figure out how steep the line is. So the slope of a line tells us how steep the line is. Okay. And so here, you can have something like, if you've got a line like this, oh, whoops, I'll do a really steep line here, right? Then this would have a, a large slope, right? Which equals, it's very steep versus something like this, this would have, uh, am I allowed to say small? I'm not sure it's that good, the best word, but small slope, right? So this would be not so steep or not steep, right? Or kind of shallow, I guess. So what does this look like? Well, the slope, you might remember, the slope of a line we usually say is rise over run. So what does that mean? It means that the rise is going to be how much did you go up by, right? So how much did you increase your y values by over the run? The run is the change in your x values, right? And so here, the rise I'll do it this way. This is the change in y over the change in x over some, some distance. Okay, so if you have something like this, okay, I'll do my line, just kind of a generic line like this, and then I'm going to put uh, x1 and x2, well, x1 is going to map to, oh, I should make sure it's sort of straight, although you'll have to cut me some slack here, there. Ding, ding, ding. Ding, 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 ding. So now we've got x1, y1, and y2. So this point here is x1, y1, 
And this point here is x2, y2. Okay. So if I have to figure out uh, the rise here, so the difference or the distance between y1 and y2, typically what we do and what we're going to do is take y2 minus y1. It doesn't actually matter uh, which one you, you kind of take first, as long as you're consistent. So if you're doing y2 minus y1, you have to do x2 minus x1 for the change in x. All right, so what this looks like is your rise is going to be from here to here, right? The rise is going to be y2 minus y1. Okay. And the run the run, the change in x is going to be x2 minus x1, right? If I asked you to find the distance between these two, we do x2 minus x1, typically. But as long as you do uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, then you'll be able to find the slope. So the slope is typically denoted by a lowercase m. Okay. So what we do is we say that m is the rise over run. The rise is y2 minus y1, and the run is x2 minus x1. Oops, make that look like a 2, huh? Okay. There we go. Okay, so this one is kind of going to be a big player in our lives for the next, well, not just 50 minutes, but uh, rest of the course, probably. Um, so as long as you have two points on the line, right, x1, y1, x2, y2, then you'll be able to find the slope of that line, okay? So for example, let me just... Example, find the slope, find the slope of the line passing through one, three, oops, one, three, and two, negative four. Okay. Like I said, it doesn't matter uh, which point you make which, right? X1, Y1, X2, Y2, as long as you're consistent, right? If this is my first point and this is my second point, then I'd have to use these as my second point for both X and Y, right? So what do we get here? We get uh, M is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. What I'll say here is that it doesn't matter which point is assigned to x1, y1 uh, slash x2, y2 as long as you're consistent. Okay. So it doesn't actually matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat this as my second point and this is my first point. So what I have, right, the y of my second point is negative 4 minus the y of my second point, which is, uh, sorry, my first point, which is 3. And then x2 is 2 minus x1, which is 1. 2 minus 1. Make this negative 4, clean. So negative 4 minus 3 puts me at negative 7. 
So I've got negative 7 divided by 2 minus 1, which is 1. So therefore, the slope here is negative 7. Okay, so this negative means something, okay? And we can have, uh, we can have positive or negative slopes. What that means is that we've got something like this. So here, if we've got, I'll do green for positive, right? So here we've got a positive slope if it's going up like this, okay, what that would uh, be reflected in is the sign of the slope would be positive, right? Here we've got a negative slope. So what that means is that we've got this kind of downward facing slope So if we have something like, <laughs> like this, right, then we've got a negative slope, okay, which would be denoted here, right? Uh, so we've got a slope that looks like this, right, which makes sense if we plotted these points, right, 1, 3, and 2, negative 4. Let's plot plot one three. Oops. Pink. Hello. Plot one three and uh, two negative four to draw the line. Okay. I've got these handy stickies. Okay, let's see here. It's still a little bit tricky to figure out what my coordinates are. So what I need to keep in mind if you're drawing a straight line, right, is um, so my y-axis has to cover at least three to negative four and my x-axis has to cover at least one to two, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to this over here a little bit like this and then one two three maybe here need a bigger sticker there one two three four maybe i'll move this down on one So treating each square as if it's one unit, right? Uh, one, three, x is one, y is three, one, two, three. Here is one, three. And two, negative four, x is two, and y is negative four, one, two, three, four. Oops. Puts me here at two, negative four. So here I am at three, one, two, and negative four. And just for reference. Technically to draw a line, you only need two points, right? Especially if you're only given two points. Later on when we're drawing lines from equations of lines, uh, you might wanna do three points just to make sure that you're drawing the right line, right? Um, but for now, right, you really only need two points um, in order to draw a line, because then what you do is you take, you know, some sort of straight edge, here's my to-do list, um, any sort of straight edge, I was about to grab my phone, uh, that works too, calculator, right, any sort of straight edge, you connect the dots, and uh, so here, I'm just gonna line it up so I connect these dots with my straight edge, and then I just draw and I'll use a different color just to show. Uh, and then you just draw the line, you connect the dots and extend the line. Okay. So I'll make a little note here. 
to draw a line, we only need two points. Connect those points using a straight edge. Right. I don't want to say ruler. No one really has a ruler hanging around all the time. Um, so any sort of straight edge. So connect those points using a straight edge and uh, extend the line. So that's how we draw a straight line, right? Uh, notice that, okay, so now, uh, so these points have a slope of negative seven. We already calculated that. Uh, and remember the steepness, not really a word, but uh, the slope tells us how steep this thing is. A, a, a slope of seven is quite steep, right? Whee! Negative seven is what makes it, gives it this downward um, kind of trend. So here, this is what a slope of negative seven looks like, quite steep. Right. Um, all right. So for the equation of a line, which is kind of where we're headed, where it is where we're headed, uh, we started and we talked about, okay, well, the slope of a line, that's a good start, right? But the slope of a line doesn't tell us everything about a line. And so what we need to do is we need to be able to uh, find equations of lines. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. There are two ways to find the equation of a line, right? They're very similar. Uh, in fact, they're uh, related. Okay. One's just a, an extension of the other. The first one is the point slope form of a line point slope form. Yeah. Um, what's nice about point slope form is that as long as you have one point on the line and the slope, hence point slope, right? So as long as we have, as long as we have one point, and this can be any point, Right, so here, wait, what happened here? One point, and I'll put in brackets just to emphasize any point on the line and the slope, we can construct the equation of a line. actually comes from uh, the equation for the slope of a line. So recall, the slope we find by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. What if I just multiplied this as one thing over to the left-hand side, right? What happens is I get the slope times x2 minus x1 equals y2 minus y1, right? They're really related, it makes sense. Uh, so what we can do is usually we write these the other way around, right? And so one of the points that we have is gonna be, uh, do, 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 do. What I wanted to do here, any point, any second point, there, better. Because I said we only needed to know one point, right? 
but also to get it into an equation of a line, right, y equals mx plus b, we have to have some y and x just variables available to us, right? So that's why I had to kind of go back and so um, we're back on track, okay? Uh, usually we have the y's on the left-hand side, so usually we can write or y minus y1 is the slope times x minus x1, right? Here, where we know or we are given m and x1, y1. We only need to know one point. So just one point on this line, any point. And the slope. If we have two points, we're able to find the slope, right? So uh, there are a couple of different options for, for working with this thing. Okay. So for example, for example, suppose we have a line with, with slope one half, oops, immediately I know it's not going to be very steep and it but it is going to be positive right so one half um, is positive and so I know the direction of my of my line and I also know something about the steepness right passing through the point two three Find the equation of the line. Find the equation of the line. So here, the point we know is 2, 3. And so what I'm going to make a note of here is that this is going to be x1, y1. That's the point that we know. And here I'm going to make a note and say m is 1 half. Because then I can plug this in here, y minus y1, y1 is 3, is equal to m, which is 1 half, times x minus x1, which is 2. So what I get is I get y minus y1, and it's always a really good idea to just write out the, uh, the blank formula that you're about to use to show off that you know what you're doing here. Right? then plug in your values. Otherwise, it's really hard for someone reading your work uh, to know where things came from, right? So y minus 3 is 1 half, oops, 1 half times x minus 2. Okay. This is not usually how we see uh, the equations of lines. Remember y equals mx plus b is usually how we see things. But if we solve for y, right, we could expand this one half inside and then add three to both sides, we could solve for y. Solving this equation, oops, this equation for y, gives us the more familiar form of a line. Y equals mx plus b, right? Where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay. Uh, this is called the slope-intercept form of a line. Okay. So I'm going to leave this here and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll solve for y. Or, you know what? What the heck? Y minus 3 is 1 half times x minus 2. Solving for y, I get, I'm going to expand this side out first. So I get x over 2 minus 2 over 2, which is 1, 
y minus three is equal to that. So moving y or plus three over x over two, whoops, x over two minus one plus three, we get y is, it doesn't matter if you have the x over two or one half times x, maybe what I should be doing is I should be keeping it as one half x. So I'll change my mind here, that's all right, that's allowed. One half x minus one plus three puts me at plus two. All right, so this is the more familiar form of y equals mx plus b. The slope is one half. That's what we were given, right? And the y-intercept is two. Okay. So that brings us to the second form of a line. I almost forgot, I was listing things here. Right, so there are two ways to find the equation of a line. The first one, this, this is the point slope form. I think you'll find the point slope form uh, more useful because it doesn't need a specific point. It doesn't need that specific y-intercept. Uh, you can just put in any point and um, the slope intercept form is that specific case of where the point that you know is the, the y-intercept. Okay, so the second one, Second way is the slope intercept form. Okay. The slope intercept form is the form of y equals mx plus b, right? This is a specific case. This is a specific case of the point slope form where the point that we know is the y-intercept, where the point that we know is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is when x is zero, and then uh, the y-intercept, we call it b here. So uh, zero b is what we'll call it. Zero b, where b is the y-intercept, okay? So if we try it, right, if it's just a specific uh, case of, that, of the first one that we just talked about, uh, I guess I'll keep the same color, y minus y1, is m times x minus x1. Okay, so now I'm saying that here x1 is 0 and y1 is b. The y-intercept looks like a 6, so I'm going to try to, but I don't know if I can make it any better. y-intercept. Okay. Um, so what I have, right, is I have y minus b is m times x minus zero, okay? If I do the same thing I just did, where I expand this m inside, right, x minus zero is just x, so I get mx y minus b equals mx. So if I solve for y, right, y equals mx plus b. Right? So that's where it came from. It's just a, a specific case of this general point slope form uh, when we have the, when the point that we know is the, the y-intercept. Okay. Even though this one, this is probably how you're going to find most of your lines. In fact, it's, it's the safest way because if you know the y-intercept, then you can just arrive at y equals mx plus b anyways. So I would probably recommend just sticking with this for finding equations of lines. However, when you're giving your answers, your answers should always be solved for y. So they should always be in the form of y equals mx plus b. 
I'll put that in. Your answers should always should always be in the form y equals mx plus b. Right? Solve for y um, and put it into y equals mx plus b form. Right? Collect like terms and simplify. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Make sure I covered everything here. Yep, looks good. Um, okay. So if we're given two points on a line, right? We can find the equation of that line and we can use either the, the point slope form or the slope intercept form, doesn't matter. Um, so if, if we're given two points on the line, so two points, I'll even say on a line, on a line, okay. We can find the equation of that line using either the point slope form or the slope intercept form. We can solve for the equation for the equation of that line. Using either one, which is the slope or sorry, the point slope form, remember the point slope form is y minus y1 is m times x minus x1, or second, the slope intercept form. which is y equals mx plus b. Okay. So a little bit of work, right? Because if we only have two points, well, those two points we can solve for m, right? And then we can just pick one of those points to solve for, uh, solve for y, right? We could plug it in for x1, y1, and then solve for y. So here, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give myself a little bit more room. Sorry guys, if you're here, right? Use M equals X2 minus X1, oh, sorry, X. Wink, I'll just start over here y2 minus y1, rise over run, kind of most basic thing we talked about today, uh, over x2 minus x1. Okay. And then just for simplicity's sake, let's just use x1 and y1. Doesn't matter, you can use x2 and y2, as long as you pick one point, right? Here, what you would have to do, the difference here is, well, you can find the slope, right? Um, but we haven't specified, so these are just two points that you have, not necessarily the y-intercept. If it's the y-intercept, you're laughing, right? Then you can just plug it in, find the slope, and then um, plug in your intercept. Okay. Here, first thing you would do is use m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? And then what you would do is uh, plug in one of the points right x y to solve for b 
then uh, you have m and b, and then you can write your, your equation. Okay. So that's why I say as a default, maybe start using this one instead. It's a little bit less work, I think, than you know, you still have to, regardless, you're going to find m. You have to find the slope either way, right? Uh, but even though you've already solved for y here, you would have to solve for y, but that's easy enough, right? Um, here, you'd have to plug in one of the points to solve for the y-intercept and then plug that y-intercept in. Okay, so as an example, uh, shown using, right? So I'm gonna do this example using either method or using both methods. Oops. Find the equation of a line. Find the equation of a line. Passing through One, three, and two, negative four. This is the, the same, these are the same two points that we already used, but just as a refresher, right? Um, let's just solve for M, right? Notice that we need to solve for M in either case. So just so you have a complete example, I just wanna show you how to solve for M again, right? Uh, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna treat this as my x1, y1, and this oops, as my x2, y2. Doesn't matter, you can interchange them, but uh, just as long as you're consistent. Okay. So what I might try to do is I might divvy up my page so I do the point slope form and the slope intercept form so we can compare them side by side. So first method is the point slope form and the second method is the slope intercept form. Okay, so the point slope form, remember is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. It'd be a good idea to kind of start to memorize this or uh, even better, do enough of these problems that you have to memorize this and you have no choice, right? Uh, so here, picking just, because I've got x1, y1, what I'm gonna do, I'm first gonna solve for m. So m, is going to be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, okay. which is going to be, in this case, negative 4 minus 3. We already did this, so it should be a refresher. 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 1, so m is negative 7. We already decided that. Okay. And of course, we would do the same thing over on the slope intercept form, but I'll leave that for a little bit. Um, so now, plug in one of the values for x, y. Okay. Maybe I'll do step A. How about that? Step B, plug in or I'll say pick one of the points to be x1, y1. I think it's easiest if we just stick with this being, so 1, 3 being x1, y1. You could definitely just do 2, negative 4, it doesn't matter. Um, and so what I get is I get y minus y1 is m times x minus x1, just so I have it here. y minus 
y1 we said was 3 is equal to, I'm just kind of color coding to show where things came from, negative 7 times x minus x1, which is 1. Oops. Okay. All right. I can expand this negative 7 inside, right? So on the right hand side, I get negative 7x plus 7 and y minus 3 on the left hand side. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3 to both sides in order to solve for y. Remember, we always want the final answer in the form of y equals mx plus b. So y is negative 7x plus 7 plus 3, or y is negative 7x plus 10. Okay. So that's the one, one option. Our second option is y equals mx plus b. The first thing we need to do is uh, find m. m from over here, uh, I'll just do it m is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Squeeze it on the same page. The second thing I need to do, right? So now I have m is negative 7. I don't know what b is. Neither of these have an x of 0, right? x has to be 0 in order for it to be the y-intercept. So I don't have the y-intercept, so I need to solve for it. Need to solve for the y-intercept, which is b. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick one of the points that are on this line Right, and use it for x and y. So pick one of the points, one of the given points, I'll say. Oops. And use as x and y. So what we have, right, is y equals mx plus b, but now I'm going to use, let's use the same point that we just used, 1, 3, right? Uh, uh, let's use 1, 3. Why not? So y is 3 and x is 1. Just kind of filling it in here. The slope we found was negative 7. And then plus b. Remember, so b, we're trying to solve for b here. This is the only unknown now. I'll clean up this b. <laughs> um, so solving for b, right, I have to add 7 to both sides. So b is going to be 3 plus 7. But I'm going to write b is 3 plus 7, so b is going to be 10. Now you need to substitute it back into uh, the equation. So there's that last step. So c, substitute m and b into y equals mx plus b. So our final answer, of course, is y equals negative 7x plus 10. These are the same, right? I would argue that this second version is a little bit more work. You have options, right? You can use either one because as long as you end up at the same equation of the line, right? then you're done. Great. Um, 
Okay. Uh, so remember, as long as your final answer is in this form, it doesn't matter which one you use. All right. Let's have a look at this graph, right? Uh, let's see here. I showed you guys Desmos last time. Let's just do it in Desmos. So negative 7x plus 10 in Desmos. Remember, Desmos is a, is a free graphing calculator. So we have negative 7x plus 10. If we zoom out a little bit, this is where our y-intercept is, right? Remember, the y-intercept is when x is 0. We, it also gives us the point of the x-intercept, which is kind of weird, 1.429, but it's wherever uh, y is 0. Again, we've got that steep line that we had when we plotted, and so I can actually trace here. Sometimes it gives me grief, but I can trace along this line, and I can find the points 1, 3, and uh, I can't remember, 2, negative 4, right? 2, negative 4. Both points are on this line, so it looks like uh, we did it right. And so that's what it would look like. Okay. Ooh. Hey, what happened here? Lost my spot. Okay. Let's talk about uh, vertical and horizontal lines just before we end today. Blink and you miss it, right? 50 minutes. Come on. Barely woken up. So vertical and horizontal lines are kind of special cases. Okay, so a horizontal line, actually I should do these in the order that I said them. Uh, a vertical line has the form x equals a. So a vertical line looks like this. Just going to be a, a straight vertical line like this. Okay. Uh, so I always used to have a hard time with horizontal versus vertical, which one's which. And so, but if you think about the horizon, the horizon is horizontal, and so the other one is vertical. You only have to remember one of two things. So, um, so a vertical line just has the equation x equals a. Remember, it, it doesn't actually care what the y value is just going to be all these y values and x is just always going to be a. So here, this is at x equals a. Okay. One thing to note is that um, a vertical line uh, has no slope or the slope is undefined. No slope slash uh, undefined. Either way is fine. A horizontal line, let's just end there. Horizontal line has the form of y equals b, right? b being the y-intercept, but if y is always equal to b, then what does that look like? Looks like this, okay? That's not very horizontal, was it? There. This has a slope of zero, right? Because the rise is zero. So slope is zero, okay? And I guess that's where we'll end today. Run out of time. Um, but we still have to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines next day, but that's about it. Any questions? Yeah, I think we're good, unless anyone else wants to chip in. Awesome. Well, no more questions. 
if you do, stick around. Uh, otherwise, have a great weekend, you guys, and I'll see you uh, on Monday, probably. See you Monday. <laughs> see ya.